Hey, Rob here for Quadratech. The last time I had Mass Jeep in the shop, it was to install the running rack backbone system on his Wrangler, opening up the possibility of carrying a variety of different pieces of cargo and gear up here on the top of his Wrangler's hardtop. The running rack backbone is made up of these castings that install on the outside of the hardtop and then bolt through to an inner structure or a backbone, if you will, that carries the load of whatever gear you have up on top of your Jeep through the hardtop into your Wrangler's sport bar and body tub. If you wanna watch that step-by-step -step install video, you can click the info button. And when you purchase your backbone system for your Jeep Wrangler JL, you have the option of pairing it with some crossbars, the perfect option for carrying things like bikes, canoes, kayaks, or even a rooftop tent up on top of your Jeep. Or you can pair it with a Rhino Rack Pioneer platform, which is what we're gonna be focusing on today. I've also got a Rhino Rack Batwing compact awning that we're gonna be installing in just a little bit. But before we get to that, I wanted to go over some of the great features you'll find in a Pioneer platform. Now the platform that comes packed with the backbone system for the Jeep Wrangler JL will measure in at 72 inches from front to back and 56 inches from side to side. There are a number of other sizes of Pioneer platforms available. In fact, I installed a slightly smaller one on my Gladiator when I installed the backbone system on that a little while back. No matter which size Pioneer platform you're looking at, all of them are gonna incorporate the same great features. Now they're constructed from heavy duty, durable and lightweight extruded aluminum finished in a lightly textured black powder coat finish. And they incorporate these T-slots that run through all of the slats as well as around the perimeter of the rack and even on the underside of the front and rear that make attaching a variety of different types of mounting accessories from Rhino Rack a very easy task. And once you have those installed, securing different pieces of cargo and gear to your Pioneer platform is quick and easy. They've even thought about lighting. If you're gonna be attaching lights to your Pioneer platform, this two-piece fiberglass reinforced nylon corners come apart to allow you access to the cavities inside the extruded aluminum so you can neatly hide any wiring for a very clean and professional look. You can even install a switch on one of the knockouts right here on the bottom side of those corners for quick and easy access. Maybe a great idea if you wanna install some scene lighting to light up your campsite, you can access that with a switch right here on the underside of your Pioneer platform. There is some assembly required with your platform, but Rhino Rack has made that very easy with complete and thorough instructions. And while yes, there are a lot of nuts and bolts holding this platform together, they even include tools like a torque limiting tool to ensure that every fastener is tightened to the exact specification without over tightening it. They even include things like a ruler printed on the underside of the Pioneer platform that makes setting up the locations for your crossbars an easy task. Each crossbar features an indicator. You'll simply slide that along the ruler to the position specified in the fitting instructions for your specific vehicle application and then tighten them down, knowing that they'll be in the exact position to line up with the castings of your Rhino Rack backbone system the first time you lift it up in place on your hardtop. You will have a couple of mounting feet options for your Pioneer platform system. You can choose from either the RCL or low profile mounting feet like I currently have installed on Matt's Jeep here or the RLT quick release mounting feet, which we'll come back to in just a moment. Now, if we look at the low profile legs, we'll see that they keep the entire Pioneer platform system sitting at just about four inches off the roof of the Wrangler, keeping an extremely low profile once everything is assembled and installed. They've also got security in mind, so we've got a keyed panel here that we remove to reveal the hardware securing that foot to the backbone casting. Now the low profile mounting feet are designed to be a semi-permanent install so that once you bolt them in place and cover them with that panel, oh, well, it's gonna keep that rack in place. It will require a little bit of work to get that removed from your Jeep. If you know you're gonna be installing and removing the platform more frequently, you can check out their quick release legs. Again, we've got a keyed panel here, but when we remove that, we see we have these two quick release tabs. By simply squeezing and pushing in those tabs, we can remove the mounting foot from the base, which would be installed here on your backbone casting, allowing you to quickly and easily remove the platform. And then when you wanna set it back in place, drop it down, pulling these tabs out, will release those spring-loaded pins, securing the foot 
back into the base. You can see it'll make a very quick and easy job of removing and reinstalling your platform up on top of here of your Wrangler's roof. Now this does sit just a bit higher than the low profile legs. The low profile feet come in at about an inch and a half tall while the quick release feet come in at about three inches tall. So that's going to put the overall increased height of your vehicle at about five and a half inches with those quick release feet. As you can see, I've already got a few accessories mounted to the Pioneer platform up here. I've got some Rotopax mounts up towards the front of the vehicle. I've got their Stowit mounts over there on the passenger side, a great secure mounting option that still gives you quick and easy access to your gear. So whether you're trying to store maybe a shovel, an ax, or even a fishing rod, the Stowit is a great option for you. Down towards the back of the vehicle there, I've got some recovery board mounting plates installed to make it easy to store some max tracks or other type of recovery boards. Now today we're gonna to be installing a Rhino Rack compact Batwing awning here on the driver's side of the vehicle. Before we get into it, why don't I climb down so we can check it out on the table. The Batwing compact awning is available in your choice of either a driver or passenger side awning. So it is important that you order the correct awning for the side of the vehicle that you intend to attach it. The very first thing you're going to do after unpacking your awning from the box is grab your hardware bag that's been stashed inside of the cover for your awning. Open up the back end of your awning and grab that hardware bag out of the inside storage pocket. You can see you're going to get everything you need to attach your Batwing compact awning to either a set of Rhino Rack crossbars or a Rhino Rack Pioneer platform as well as a pair of heavy duty mounting brackets. These brackets have been designed to be offset which gives you the flexibility of either mounting your awning slightly higher or if you turn the bracket over, mounting slightly lower. It's great to allow you to customize the exact final position of your awning depending on the mounting feet you have for your platform or your personal preference. You're also gonna get a cleat that installs at the back of the vehicle on the opposite side from your awning. The first step we need to do is to go ahead and get our awning mounting brackets loosely attached to the back side of the awning. We'll do that with the four provided T-bolts along with washers and lock nuts. And then we can get the hardware for attaching the brackets to the Pioneer platform or crossbars set up. We'll be using the smaller four bolts, lock washers, washers and nut plates to do that. Now, if you are gonna be installing your awning onto a set of crossbars, you wanna make sure that you're setting up this hardware in an orientation that's perpendicular to the face of the awning mounting bracket. If you're installing your compact Batwing awning on a Pioneer platform, you wanna set up this hardware so that it is parallel to the mounting face of that awning bracket. Now, if you don't have a friend to help you lift and install the awning onto your Pioneer platform, you might find it easier to install each of the mounting brackets separately. Align the mounting plates with the T-slot on your platform, sliding one first towards the rear of the platform, then install the second awning mounting bracket, leaving it closer to the front of the Pioneer platform. Next, you can lift the awning up into place and align the T-bolts into the track on the backside of the awning, one mounting bracket at a time. With the brackets loosely attached to the awning, start by aligning the awning to the back of the vehicle first, then you'll want to ensure that you have approximately 28 inches of space between the front and rear bracket. At that point, we can go ahead and center the pair of brackets front to rear on the awning. With everything aligned, start by tightening the mounting brackets to the Pioneer platform using a 10 millimeter wrench. Then come back and tighten the bolts, securing the mounting brackets to the back side of the awning using a 13 millimeter wrench. Finally, we need to install the cleat on the Pioneer platform. Start by inserting one of the provided bolts through the cleat and loosely install a nut plate on that bolt. Follow that up with the second bolt through the opposite side of the cleat and another nut plate. Then we can align the cleat with the T-slot on the back of the Pioneer platform, dropping it into place and sliding it to the opposite side of the vehicle from the awning, at which point you can secure it in place with a four millimeter Allen wrench. It's just that quick and easy to add accessories to your Rhino Rack Pioneer platform like a Batwing compact awning. Now why don't I go ahead and show you just how easy it is to open it up so we can take a better look at it. So you can see it literally takes seconds to open your Batwing compact awning giving you 270 degrees or almost 70 square feet of UV protection, shade and protection from those occasional rainstorms that might creep up on you. The Rhino Rack Batwing Compact Awning is constructed from a durable ripstop polycotton canvas. 
that's both mold resistant as well as tested to a UV 50 plus rating. One of the things I really like about using a Batwing style awning is that should you be caught out in less than perfect weather, you still have access to not only the side of your Jeep here at the rear doors, but also the rear cargo area while staying dry and out of the rain. Now, when you're setting up your Batwing compact awning, you wanna make sure that you are using the provided stakes as well as the guy wires to ensure that your awning is protected from any unexpected high gusts of wind. You can attach those guy wires to the fabric in between the support poles or at each of the poles themselves, and you'll use two of the stakes at each of the support poles. As an added tip, if you add a little extra tension to the fabric sections between the support poles, it's gonna help prevent water from pulling up on top of the awning, allowing it to easily run right off. When it comes time to close your Batwing Compact awning, it's as easy as reversing the steps you use when you opened it up. Start by collapsing and folding the support poles up into the retaining hooks. Go ahead and release the tension strap and remove it from the cleat up on the Pioneer platform. And then swing all four support arms back to the awning base, securing them to the magnetic closure. Then you can fold the fabric in half and start by rolling it from the rear, finally securing it with the provided hook and loop straps. Now, if you guys wanna get more information or to purchase a Rhinorak backbone system, Pioneer platform or Batwing compact style awning, or for that matter, any of the other accessories you've seen on Matt's Jeep here, you can click that info button to head over to quadratech.com. Of course, if you have any comments or questions about getting any of this stuff installed on your Jeep, you can always either swim me down in the comment section below or contact us directly at any of the options on the screen. And as always, if you haven't already and you like these videos, do me a huge favor, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification icon, so be sure to catch all of our latest videos. Till next time, I'm Rob, I'll see you guys out on the trail.